Number 1. Cherry Ann Mahan. Cherry Ann Mahan was born on August 14, 1976 in Saxonburg, Pennsylvania. Janice Mahan, Cherry's mother was just 16 years old when she gave birth to her daughter. Janice became pregnant with Cherry after she was raped at just 15 years old. But still, Janice doted on her daughter Cherry who grew into a friendly, happy child. Janice Mahan later married a Vietnam veteran named Leroy McKinney. Leroy accepted Cherry as his own in 1984. The family relocated to Corn Planter Road in Butler County where Cherry attended Winfield Elementary School. Cherry's teachers claimed she was a bright, happy child, who was very well liked by everyone. On Friday, February 22, 1985, Cherry was excited that her mother was going to take her on a play date when she got out of school. Cherry was accompanied by her mother to the bus stop located at the end of the uphill driveway to their home. When the school bus arrived, the two told each other they loved each other and then she boarded the bus. Cherry was last seen after getting off of the school bus with three other students around 4.05 p.m. on February 22, 1985. She had to walk approximately 150 yards from the bus stop to the dirt driveway of her family's home, on Corn Planter Road in Cabot. Her stepfather heard the bus and waited for Cherry to come up the driveway, but she never did. He then went looking for her, and when he could not find her, he called the police. Police immediately launched an intense search to locate little eight-year-old Cherry. Police extensively searched around the area including the home where Cherry lived. They used bloodhounds and helicopters and conducted house-to-house -house inquiries. An estimated 250 local volunteers helped search all of Butler County for Little Cherry to no avail. The community raised $39,000 as a reward for her safe return. Investigators ruled out any possibility that she had been kidnapped for ransom. They believed that Cherry most likely knew her abductor or abductors, however, all of the family members have been ruled out as suspects. A distinctive bluish-green Dodge van was seen near the bus stop when Cherry disappeared. Witnesses stated they had seen a blue car following the van, and that the van was repainted black one, or two weeks after Cherry's disappearance. Police have followed up on many leads, however, neither Cherry or her abductors have ever been found. Number 2 Carla Rodriguez Seven-year-old Carla Rodriguez lived with her mother and father in a central Las Vegas neighborhood. She was always smiling and very adventurous and loved riding her bike around the neighborhood. On the morning of October 20, 1999, Carla's mother kissed her goodbye and watched her head off to school. Little did she know, that was the last time she would see her daughter again. Later that evening Carla went to visit her friend just two blocks away from her home. The boy's mother told her to go home because it was getting too late. She played outside alone for about 15 minutes before leaving on her bike. Carla was never seen again. She wasn't reported missing until the next morning. Her father spoke to the neighbor the night before who last saw Carla, and assumed she must have gone to another friend's house. The next morning, when she still wasn't home, her mother called the school to see if she had showed up. Unfortunately she never showed up to school. She then contacted the police and police immediately conducted a full search and investigation. They went door to door questioning neighbors. The family was quickly ruled out of having any involvement. However, police were at a dead end. They had nothing, no leads, and they never found Carla or her bike. Las Vegas Metro Police believe that Carla Rodriguez was likely abducted by a stranger on October 20, 1999. Carla's mother still has a lot of guilt, and says that she wishes that she paid more attention to her daughter, and her whereabouts. Number 3 Wesley Dale Morgan Wesley lived with his mother, Ruby Renee Havard, and her former boyfriend, Bernal Hilton Jr. The family lived in a rented home along U.S. Highway 63 near the Bluff Creek community in Clinton, Louisiana. On May 15, 2001, Wesley was last seen playing with puppies on the front porch of his home at approximately 9.45 a.m. Ruby claimed that she left two-year-old Wesley unattended to prepare lunch, and when she returned, he was gone. 
Ruby immediately called the police, and extensive searches of the area were done. Authorities used a helicopter thermal imaging device to assist in the efforts, but no evidence was located. Investigators questioned Ruby about Wesley's disappearance. She has denied any involvement in her son's case, and claims that officials are biased against her as a result of her lifestyle. Authorities stated that Ruby and her boyfriend both failed polygraph tests, and Ruby rarely inquired about the status of Wesley's case. A witness claimed to have observed a boy matching Wesley's description in the area, but no evidence was located to support the sighting. Authorities believe that Wesley is alive and that his mother possibly gave him away or sold him. In 2008, she was charged with attempting to sell another of her children after she allegedly offered to sell her unborn child to a married couple for over $2,000, however. Wesley's case remains unsolved. Ruby pleaded not guilty in trying to sell her youngest child, six years after Wesley disappeared. Police still believe that Ruby sold Wesley and lied about him going missing. However, police state they just don't have enough evidence to prove this theory. If Wesley is still alive today he would be 22 years old. Authorities are now offering a $10,000 reward for anyone who has any information on the disappearance of Wesley Dale Morgan.